Hey YouTube, welcome to the Weekend Warrior Garage YouTube channel. On today's episode, we're going to be tearing down the engine of a Honda 300 EX and seeing what it needs to be rebuilt. Let's get started. Alright, so as you can see, it is already removed from the frame. Um, if you're looking for a video on how to remove it, that will come later. Uh, but for right now, just uh, take off the front mount and then there's the back one. Um, it, it's, it's pretty easy, but anyways, um, I bought this engine used off of Facebook marketplace. I believe they were going to use it for some kind of homemade go-kart or shifter cart or something along those lines. Hence the wiring harness. Uh, it came with a carburetor, a twist throttle, uh, lever, and even the clutch assembly. So, uh, while it is removed, it, it's darn close to being, uh, the same that it would be sitting inside. The reason I purchased this engine is because my little brother is actually riding a 98 Honda 300EX. Um, but he took a tumble down at the dunes and uh, his chain popped off and cracked his cases uh, right along here. Um, it was needing an engine rebuild anyway, so I figured the actual cheapest route is to buy a whole engine rather than trying to buy cases. Um, so I just need to tear this down, inspect it, see what we're going to need, uh, cause we're going to rebuild it during spring break. All right. So to start off, we're going to be removing the valve cover along with all the accessories, uh, to include the wiring harness and the clutch cover, I'm sorry, the clutch cable and kind of going from there. So on the stator side here, which is this guy, uh, that's your starter assembly. The wire coming off of here is for the stator. Oh, yeah. Because that's that's the proper way to fix a wiring harness. So just pull that tab back and pull it out. I didn't think it was going to come for a second. Um, but down here is the actual stator plug. It's the big circle one. Sorry, mine's all zip tied up here. The big circle one. Yellow wire is going to it. Same thing, the tab gets pulled back. Nope, down here. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Here we go. And that should have been it. Um, and it looks like my clutch lever and cable are still barely hung on here. So it's just this 10 millimeter. Wrong way. Well, I never. So the clutch cable is held on by this bracket. It's two 10 millimeter bolts that ride net right next to the starter. And then the clutch cable, you just kind of slide in and then pull right back out. Need this wiring harness because it's kind of a rat's nest. It's always good to put your engine on top of wires. All right, so valve cover, one of the breather hoses here. All right, so these do have a hard oil line that go from the clutch cover up to the head. We're going to start by taking that off, and that, that is also a 10 millimeter. You know, to be honest with you, I don't even know if this thing has oil in it. Maybe that's what we should check first. Before I make a freaking mess.
Looks like it's got clean oil on it, so that's Yeah, it's oil. <laughs> Just make sure it wasn't water. Uh, so I'm going to have to address that when we get down to the bottom. All right, so three bolts and your hard oil line will come off. And you're going to have two bolts. These are called banjo bolts. They have holes right here in the center and through the middle. And then your third bolt will just be a standard stubby one that goes on the back side of the head there. All right. So then these are the valve covers. And those, that's going to be an 8 millimeter. Or 5 sixteenths if your 8 millimeter is not in that spot. Four eight millimeter bolts, valve cover caps, pop off. Looks like they did the RTV special instead of just buying a new O-ring. We'll be replacing those. Not that big of a deal. Okay. So to remove this valve cover, which is this guy here, I think I called those valve covers earlier. Uh, those are just your valve caps or your access caps. This is the actual valve cover. It's just going to be all 10 millimeter bolts. Um, looks like there's a good amount of them. Uh, so, yep. I'm too impatient for the electric uh, ratchet sometimes. I had to cheat a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, I did not, I don't pull them out as I go. Uh, mainly for that, there are different lengths, that sort of thing. But you might deal with RTV from the last people that uh, might have been in your engine. <sighs> um, I mean, look at that. So, uh, anyways, I just like. To make sure they're all unthreaded, lift it straight up, and everything kind of comes with it. Um, because then, if you don't need to pull them out, you don't have to, but if you're not going back together right away, uh, it's a good place just to hold them all. You can kind of use your entire hand. Let's take a look, see here. And yes, I did just drop them out. All right, so looking at the valve cover here, after pulling it off, you want to inspect your rockers. Make sure that they're they're nice and smooth. They should be slightly up, uh, oblong or uh, got a curve to it. I ain't the best at the English is here. Uh, I had a rocker arm. I'll try to find it for you guys. That was real uh, wavy. I'll post a picture of it right here. See how there's those waves in there? Anyway, so looking at here, I mean, it looks like... That's like caulking from doing a sink or some tile or something. I don't know why you just wouldn't buy a new cap plug, but that's all right. Anyway, so those look good. Uh, looking in the engine here. Um, the bearing's got maybe some... Maybe some rust on it. Um, I don't know how long this engine has been sitting. That's pretty dirty. 
because I could have been from one. I pulled it off. Terrible, terrible RTV job. Um, get the eight cent paper gasket that goes around here, guys. It's worth it. All right. Uh, so we'll be moving along here. Uh, next, we'll be removing the timing chain tensioner. It's going to be those two guys. Uh, you can uh, decompress them by turning it. I'm only gonna, I only do that when going back together, though. Pulling that out, that'll loosen up the chain, uh, which will allow us to get the cam out of there. All right, so I'll flip this around for you guys. Just going to be real quick here on the back side. Just those two eight miller, eight millimeter bolts. Uh, I never try to take out the entire bolt. Uh, I always get them both loosened up, kind of going, so there's not a bunch of stress on them. So that's just a spring inside there. Uh, when we go back together, I'll show you. But it just pushes on a timing chain guide, which tightens the the chain up here. Okay, so to take off the cam, you gotta take off the timing chain and do that. There are two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the uh, cam gear on and then it'll just kind of slide out the back. So you'll need to rotate the engine. Uh, to do so, you'll need to remove the cap. Pro tip, get you a 10 millimeter bolt. You should have plenty from your valve cover um, and maybe some vice grips or a wrench. That's the same size, that'll come right off. Like so, off the back, and just kind of work the chain coming around. You can remove the gear. It says out. That's how you remember which side goes out. Anyways, uh, so we're going to be removing the top end. So you can go ahead and drop that chain. Let me give you a little bit of uh, angle here. Uh, you can go ahead and drop the chain down in there. Um, when you pull the head and everything, it'll be easy to grab back out of there. All right, so now that we got that off, kind of just inspecting the uh, where the cam bearings ride. Which look good. It's a stock cam. I was hoping that it was like a hot cam or something, you know, just to have a score, but who knows? Maybe it's bored out and we got a we got a nice piston in there. Who knows? All right, so then to remove the head, we have two Allen head bolts here, and then two, I'm sorry, four capped bolts, and those look like a 14. See if the impact got enough juice. I want to lose it, so I'm going to put it back real quick. And do these have any bolts that are upside down? Uh, so you will need to remove your exhaust. Uh, if you're doing this on, on the four-wheeler itself, you would need to remove the, the exhaust, obviously, to take the head off. Um, I can't remember if uh, Honda has bolts or studs with nuts, um, but either way. Mine does not. They're not broken off. Uh, I guess we'll come across the bridge when we get there. Okay, so for those. Boom. All right, so that's going to be a 10 millimeter Allen. Yeah, I didn't think so.
You only want to go a little bit at a time, like I, like I said. Once you get everything kind of loose, then you can. Uh, so the all these will have washers, kind of like that, along with the caps, which go over the studs. And they can be a pain in the butt. Get your little magnet, pulls them right out. I do like to keep the washers with the bolts that they came with, or were on, I guess. Okay. Well, if I'm not mistaken, I have been wrong. I've been wrong today, even. This said should come off. Sometimes, might need a little persuasion behind it. I can't remember. If... Okay, just making sure it didn't have any bolts that went upside down into the head. So careful with these fins now. If you're going to be prying on here, be careful with them. They will break. Not that it's detrimental to the engine, but it can be. There we go. Shoe's starting to go. Just going to kind of work it. You can see here is the separation of the head and the cylinder. And this is right where you want to kind of be working it. Don't give it all the beans. Just a little bit at a time because you're working it past these studs uh, and sometimes they're not perfectly up and down um, so they put a little tension on it. Just keep working it back and forth. Again, be careful of the fins. You don't want to break them. On your little bugger. Oh, because we got rust. How about that? With a open valve. But <laughs> I think that's a high compression piston. <laughs> My God. All right, so this is not what I was hoping to see. Um, that valve's open. Uh, it's probably going to be bent. I guess I could have looked at it and probably told you that it was stuck. Um, that's rust. Moisture got in this engine. That's not exactly terrible. Um, I mean, it's not the best, but it's, it's, it's not detrimental. Turn off the flash. Oh, oh, just by, there we go. Um, corrosion, water, but there's no detonation. Man, those are valves are a little tiny, aren't they? Um, but that should be a wait, wait Wiseco, Waseco, I, I say Waseco, should be a Waseco piston, um, which is like 120 bucks. Um, so that's cool. It's a OE Honda head. It's not a cheap aftermarket one. You know, that, that's just plastic, man, that's just plastic coating. Chipping off of that. Probably need new ones. But yeah, that should be like an 11 to 1 piston. So that's cool. I didn't get a hot cam, but I got a high compression piston. So um, I got a stock one in my junk drawer somewhere. I'll have to uh, show you guys the comparison. So we're going to keep moving. There's nothing really, I mean... That sucks, but uh, the head on the uh, one that's currently on the four wheeler should be uh, should be good. Obviously, it runs now, as you guys saw in the videos. Um, man, that sucks. Not that I can't be fixed. Don't get me wrong here; that's completely fixable. Um, even here at home, it can be. But, uh, I'm trying to do this as cheap as possible. 
So anyways, uh, let's keep moving. Next step, those two 10 millimeter bolts there. And you know, I looked around twice now. Nope, so it should be just those two and we'll get it off. Man, I suck at camera angles, don't I? Might need a smallie and a wobble bit, maybe. Wobble bits, wobble sockets, whatever you call them. The wobbly ones, the drunk bit. Dang, I said it again. The drunk sockets, they help. Speed things up. Instead of trying to use a wrench. So obviously with that with that piston in there, somebody's been in here. Um, saved me money. Cause I was I was actually thinking about buying one. Um, he rides down at the dunes a lot. And uh, on the back and forth, do a hot cam, you know, the stage one hot cam or the piston. But uh, I just have to buy rings. I'm good with it. Yeah, I just did this by hand. Even though I told you that the drunk sockets speed it up. All right, so same thing, be careful where, where you pry and what you pry on. And then the same thing, you gotta, you're gonna be working it up past the studs. And you also have to fight the piston because Mine's rusty. I'm going to lubricate it just to help me out here. Now I'm going to use WD-40. Not my go-to. Uh, these can corrode a little bit. You be careful. I'm going to whack the hell out of this. There it goes. Oh, the still, I mean, the engine did rotate. Just, I mean, the mid there it goes. Kind of give her the old weevil wobble here. That timing guide will come out. There it goes. All the goodness coming out with it. Man. I'd say this engine sat with oil or with water in it for a while. Uh, I mean, the piston's aluminum. This is aluminum, so it's going to be fine. But the rings, um, when I said it was fine to drop your timing chain in your engine, and that without it rotating. But it does appear that the rings were good and did not allow a lot of moisture by. But the rings are frozen solid to the piston and very rusty. But nothing I can't clean up. So while it's cool that this is a high compression piston, um, saving me a hundred bucks or so, um, it's not exactly what I wanted to find water-wise, cylinder condition-wise, which it actually looks pretty good. Um, quick hone. Probably will make it look better. All right, so uh, I'm gonna fight these rings. They just come off like any other ring, but they're flat right now um, from being rusty. So I'm gonna fight those for a little while. 
and I'll check back in with you guys here in a second. Okay, so captain's log here. Um, that's the oil skirt ring. Never quite seen them do that. I was only able to get the oil rings off. Um, and pressure rings I'm still fighting with. So anyways, I'm going to take the piston out. Figured I'd show you guys. Uh, so that's the piston retainer clip. There's two. You only need to remove one. The one you removed, again, I'm probably going to have to fight mine because of corrosion. But you'll be able to push it out. Should be able to. Um, I suggest putting a rag. Rag, towels, uh, come back up. I do not like spinning that way. There we go. Ooh, watch your fingers. Uh, putting a rag or something, blocking the hole. Um, if you drop one of these rings down in there, one of the clips, I highly doubt you'll ever get it back. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, then you can reuse those if they don't look like mine. You want it to still be circular. Uh, you may have to find a socket or something to help punch that out. Looks like my 10. Well, if you're following along with your engine, I hope your wrist pin came out easier than mine did. Because I fought that for like 10 minutes. Um, so anyways, looking at the piston here. Good thing it's aluminum, is what I can say. I'll have to run the uh, part number here. I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that's an 11 to 1. Um, it's a pretty common one. Uh, pretty common piston. Uh, so anyways, I couldn't take the rings off while it was still in the engine or connected to the rod there because I can't find the dang line. Oh, there's one. When they're compressed, they get a little tiny. Okay, back to our regular scheduled programming here. Taking out the clutch cover. And drain the oil first. If not, you'll make a mess, and I'm sure I'll still make a mess. Hey, you're gonna, you're gonna use power tools. Make sure it has a battery in it. So eight millimeters. Eight millimeters, by the way. This is your oil filter housing. That third bolt's a dummy. Or maybe I'm the dummy. Hey, make sure your batteries are charged too. Watch, this one's gonna be on its way out too. Nope, Never mind. Like I was saying, don't take off that cover. You don't need to. Uh, you will need to take off the shifter linkage down here, which is a 10 millimeter. Get the drum socket. That's what I have. Make sure you don't lose those. You will not be happy with yourself. Okay. Uh, most likely the oil will come out. Look for a good pry spot or a knock spot, one of the two. Remember, anything's a hammer. Truck. That little screwdriver got the job done. Like I 
I said, oil is probably going to come out. Be prepared for that. Doesn't look like mine's going to. Good, no water. What I was looking for. It's actually really clean inside there. And the clutches are very well spaced. That's a plus. It's got a little oil in it. I was going to inspect the filter, but I'll just leave it be. So for the new gasket, you'll just need to clean up all this. Your gasket will most likely be green as well. well that looks, looks really good. Let me get it up in your teeth here. Nice, nice and spaced. Focus. Nice and spaced in there. You can still see the clutch material um, between there. No rust, uh, surface rust or spots or anything on the gears. The oil smells like oil and not water. That's going to be your oil pump here. Your timing chain. Um, most engines don't allow you to just slide the chain back. 300 EXs do. Um, you can slide it off the gear. That's always fun. Um, that's where that hard line went to. Uh, you'll just need to make sure that you have it back in that hole. Right there, how it just kind of snapped in there. Um, when you go back together. Because your hard line will connect to that. Anyways, we'll get working on the stator side. So while I'm trying to film for you guys, I'm also inspecting it myself. Um, that rotates really nice. Uh, I'm also inspecting it for myself, so there's poor angles. I do apologize. I'm doing the best I can. There's the oil. Let me dump this out real quick. Come here. And go back. So shifter, that's your reverse lever. Looks like they are 10 millimeters. Uh, you know what that means. Drunk socket. Because I don't know where the other 10 millimeter is. These can get dirt built up in the teeth there. Just get some of the pride behind it. Come on. It's almost there. Just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Spray some WD-40 in it. Or PV Blaster. I like PV Blaster. I'm just out. And I had WD-40. Why did I have WD-40? Because I never use it. Why did I buy it in the first place? Probably because it was cheap. Alright. Stuff like that, I like to put the bolts back in because it's a lot harder to lose a whole entire shifter than it is one little bolt. Not that I don't have a whole drawer full of bolts over there, but. Keep the ones that you don't need to lose. All right, guess what? Eight millimeters again. We need to start with the starter gears here. Can I take that off first? Surely not. I think that's just for pretty. Well, Yamaha was staring at the performance side. Honda was over here just trying to look pretty. Yeah, I am a Yamaha fan. I work on everything. I hate on everything, too. If, they, if, if a company makes something junk, 
I'll say it's junk. Like the second gear in an 01 Yamaha Raptor 660. It's absolutely junk. And yeah, I use Ryobi. It's a great DIY company. And that bolt's got a lot of corrosion on it. Ooh, lots of RTV. That's always the best sign. I'm just thinking a spark. I forget one. Bottom's not one to release, but I also could be fighting the flywheel. So the the stators on these are magnetic, uh, or on, on on anything with a stator, it's magnetic, and you gotta slide it past the flywheel. Uh, and so, so sometimes it will feel like it's sticking, but really you're just fighting the magnetic connection. But they also have dowel pins to help align it. Can't tell which I'm fighting. Or a shit ton of RTV. Mom should need to use another screwdriver. That's a great idea. So I'm not really prying with the pry bar right now. We're using it just as kind of like a wedge. As I work around it, There it is. Might be just be trying to get over these seals as well. A little bit of rust. That's your stator. It's your flywheel. Let the starter gear come out here. There it is. Not like so. Oh, uh, so yeah. A little bit of rust build up there. Like I said, that's magnetic, so. Not surprised that it's catching everything. A lot of corrosion right there. Look at all that RTV. You're using that much RTV. First off, this is a gasket. Get the gasket. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that expensive. Jeez. Ooh, spiders. Fun. Let that just eat. But anyways, I mean, besides this little bit of rust here, it actually, and by rust, I mean it's just a little bit of surface rust. Comes right off. But, looks good. Um, Obviously, I'm going to clean it up, put a gasket on it when I get them in. All right. I'm going to start with just these two bolts there. I'm going to leave it on. There's no problem with it other than the large amount of RTV. Can you guys tell I don't like RTV? Looks like they greased it, too. Good for them. Uh, all right. That's, that's as far as I'm going to tear it down. Uh, the black paint from the factory actually looks pretty good. Um, 
surprisingly. Uh, boy might want to paint it, so hope he doesn't. Maybe we'll just maybe we'll just paint the top end, bud. The piston is a Waseco, Weisco, however the frick you say it. Uh, I'm sure you guys will correct me in the comments, all five of you. Um, anyways, it is an 11 to 1 ratio, uh, compression ratio piston and is a, a 76 millimeter piston. Um, stock is 74, so it's a point. Typically what you see, it's a 2 millimeters oversized. Uh, typically how you see it is 0.2. Um, you know, board 20 over. That's kind of what they refer to. Cylinder. Uh, I gave it a quick hone just to see what I was working with here. Let me turn the flash on. I guess I should hold the camera this way. Those, that's not watermarks for me. Like for me not getting it dry or anything. Um, those are pitted. Uh, from where the piston was sitting. Um, and held just a little bit of water. Uh, again, luckily this is aluminum, so it's relatively untouched. Um, but yeah, uh, that's where the, the piston set for a majority of the time. As you can see it goes all, all the way around, but it does, uh, it is a little bit deeper on the other side, which is, uh, which would be the front side of the motor. The motor has a natural, uh, tilt to it. So that would explain why more water was here. Um, but the piston rings did their jobs and it looks good down in here. There's just a little bit of uh, surface stress, a little bit of condensation, but really the motor turns over really freely and the transmission gears look good and uh, oil is actually relatively new. Um, as for the head, I cleaned it up just a little bit. After some soaking, I just kind of pushed down on the valve and it did snap shut. Um, I just cleaned up the face here with a soft bristle. As you can see, the intake is taped. But what was not taped was this exhaust side. Um, that, that valve you can see there is the one that was sticking. But yeah, um, you know, I don't know how water got into this. Like I said, I bought it used. Um, it sat in my climate controlled garage for probably six months or so. Um, but yeah, so what I will need to do, I will need to buy another cylinder, have it bored out to match the piston. While that seems wrong, I mean, th this, this piston or the cylinder will need bored out again. It's got a lot of life left in it. Um, but the cylinder is cheaper than trying to buy a piston. Seems silly, but it is how it is. This is a stock um, cam. I kind of got excited. I saw the W, and for some reason, I thought the last hot cam I had had a had something like that. But no, they have serial numbers, and they're pretty proud of their stuff. It, it would say hot cam, plus it's bearing. It would say hot cam, and they do not. So that is just a stock cam. Uh, cam there's a good chance a hot cam will go in it we'll just have to see uh, anyways that's gonna do it for this episode just the tear down um stay tuned uh the 14th through the 19th of march is the spring break and that's when he's gonna be here um and we're gonna be pulling the engine out and then Rebuilding this, pulling his engine out, and putting this one back in, and then going for a uh, riding trip. He'll be obviously on his 300EX. Bad camera angle, bad camera angle. Um, and I'll be riding the Raptor 350. Uh, I do have a video on that. Poor, <laughs> poor video quality because I, I filmed it for TikTok. So it's like that instead of like this. Um, but anyways, uh, video on that running. I did rebuild the top end on that one. It luckily did not have rust in it. Um, but it did have a, a smoked cam and cam lobe. I'm sorry, uh, rocker. Uh, it does run. I, I just got to finish it up. Anyways, that's going to do, do it for today. I got to contact my machinist buddy, get everything kind of sent off to him. 
hopefully he can get it turned around in time for me. Uh, I also got to buy a cylinder. So, uh, thanks for tuning in. Like, share, subscribe, comment, interact. Let me know what you want to see. Anyway, stay tuned. Uh, hopefully going to be putting out more videos. Appreciate you checking in.